This is an 8 bus power system modeling. If we calculate the load flow, we see some overloading issues in our system. To get rid of all these problems, we should know what is overloading and how this occur. When a number of electrical appliances of high power rating are connected in a single terminal, large amount of current drawn from the system, which is called overloading. And the overloading occurs when too much current drawn then a circuit can safely handle. In case of overloading, if there is a circuit breaker, it will trip and shutting off the power to the entire circuit. If there were no circuit breakers or fuses, an overload would cause the circuit wiring to overheat, which could melt the wire insulation and may lead to a fire. Let us turn to our system and check where overloading occurs and how to solve these problems. As you see, overloading occur on generators and transformers. If we double click on this generator and then double click on the load flow, we see that the active power is exceeding at its rate. Let us decrease our active power to 100 MW and increase the reactive power to 20 MVAR. Then click OK. If we execute the load flow calculation, we see that the overloading problem is fixed. Let us do the same thing for our other generator. Now the overloading problem is fixed in all parts of our system and can run successfully. This is not the only solution to fix overloading. It depends on each part of our system overloading occurs. Let us add a heavy load in this bus bar to see how overloading occurs on the cable. Assume 500 megawatt for active power and 200 MVAR for reactive power. If we execute the load flow calculation, we see that overloading occur on these cables. There are many methods to fix overloading issue, such as adding bundle transmission line, increase the size of cable, adding parallel transmission line, adding parallel generator, adding distributed generator near the heavy load, adding parallel distribution transformer to the old transformer and etc. Ok, let's fix them. Double click here, click on the type and increase the rated current to 5 kA, then click OK. Then double click on this line and add a parallel line. If we execute the load flow calculation, we will, we will not see any overloading issue. The next step that I am going to do is calculating short circuit on this bus bar. Right click, then from the calculate, click on short circuit, then click on execute. Let us zoom it to see the data. Initial short circuit current is about 20 kA and peak short circuit current is around 49 kA. As you see the magnitude of the short circuit current is thousands times larger than the normal current. During the short circuit, the voltage at the fault point decreases to zero and high magnitude current flow through the network and produces excessive heat and may result in fire or explosion. Sometimes it may produce the arc that causes the major damage to the element of the power system. 
There may be questions come to your mind like what is the difference between short circuit and overload. As we saw both issues in our network, in case of short circuit, the voltage at the fault point reduces to zero and the large current starts flowing through the system. But in overload condition, the voltage reduces but it cannot be zero and the current also do not exceed in like short circuit current. Short circuit occurs when the neutral and live wire comes in contact, but overload occurs when the number of electrical equipment connects to the same socket. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe your own channel.